Thank you, Wendy and Meredy. And good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship here at St. Joe First United Methodist Church. It's great to see you all here this morning, and I'm so glad that you chose to join us in worship today. My name is Kim O'Haver, and I'm serving as your worship reader this morning. My verse today is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 15, verses 5 and 6. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now as we begin our service of worship this morning, let's join together in singing Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah, it's number 127 in your hymnals, or you may follow along with the words on the screen. Please stand if you wish and as you are able. Our affirmation of faith this morning is a statement of faith of the Korean Methodist Church, and that is number 884 in the back of your hymnals, or once again, you may follow along with the words on the screen. We believe in the one God, creator and sustainer of all things, father of all nations, the source of all goodness and beauty, all truth and love. We believe in Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, our teacher, example, and redeemer, the savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. We believe in the forgiveness of sins, in the life of love and prayer, and in grace equal to every need. We believe in the word of God contained in the Old and New Testaments as the sufficient rule both of faith and of practice. We believe in the church, those who are united in the living Lord for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reign of God as the divine will realized in human society and in the family of God 
where we are all brothers and sisters. We believe in the final triumph of righteousness and in the life everlasting. Amen. may be seated. Well, good morning, everybody. How are we doing today? Some of you are awake. That's good. Well, for those that don't know me, my name is Will Flaherty. I serve as the director of children and youth ministry here, and I want to say just welcome to everyone, everyone here. If you're worshiping with us in person or if you're worshiping online, we are so glad that you've chosen to worship with us this morning. Before we go into our video announcements, there is one thing I do want to add in and that is that yesterday, two members of our church who normally worship at the 11 o'clock service but have attended this service before, uh, and that is Sarah and Trevor Nelson got married. So if you see them out and about, congratulate them. We're happy for them and pray God's blessings over them. At this time, sit back, relax, and enjoy these video announcements. Good morning, everyone. So glad to see all of you. I hope you're doing great. Thank you so much for choosing to worship with us, whether in person or online. We are so glad you're here. If it's your first time, your 500th time, and contact information has changed, don't forget to fill out one of our connect forms in front of you in the pew back so we can have all of your information, get connected with you, and get you plugged in in the church. Also, if you have any prayer requests, whether it be for you, a family member, a pet, whatever it may be, please fill out one of our prayer cards that's also found in the pew back in front of you. We pray over these as a staff because we care about you guys. Just a few announcements before we get started, and the first is online worship. If you are worshiping with us online, thank you so much for worshiping with us, and we are just wanting to keep accurate records of who's all with us every Sunday, so if you choose to worship with us online, please reach out, contact Dan, and let him know, hey, I'm still here worshiping with you. We would love, love, love to know that information. For all of our pre-K through fifth grade friends, just want to let you know that we're going back into full school year mode for Spark. We're going to be meeting every Thursday night from 6 till 7.30. And for all of our middle school and high school friends, we're going back into normal youth group schedule every Sunday night from 7 till 8.30. We hope to see you there. If you want to get involved in any of these ministries, we'd love to have you help out. Uh, I cannot wait to see what this year has in store. I am very excited for it. Looking forward to seeing you all there. Fall, one of my favorite times of the year, is practically here. We're so excited, and that means Fall Festival is coming up so soon. That's Sunday, October 9th from 3 to 7 p.m. We're really excited about this event. It's our biggest outreach event of the year, and that means we need all hands on deck. So if you would like to volunteer, please contact me, and I'll get you plugged in where you'd like to be plugged in. And if you would like to volunteer in a different way, just by donating, please contact me again. We need all the help we can get for this awesome event, and we hope to see you guys there. We have a group that's traveling down to the Midwest Mission Distribution Center this week. This is an amazing trip, uh, and for all of those that are going on this trip, I just want to say, first of all, thank you so much for going to serve, and just know that all of us here will be praying for you for a successful trip, uh, and we hope you come back with so many amazing stories to share. Now let's continue to worship together. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. It's very weird turning it over to myself. At this time, I'm going to invite you all to remain seated, and we're going to be singing our prayer song, which is Spirit Song, which can be found on page 347 in your hymnals. We're going to be singing both verses.
bow your heads and pray with me, please? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for all that you do for us. We thank you for the joy that you fill our lives with, the hope, the peace, the understanding, and the grace that you give us. And God, even on days like today where we look outside and it's a little bit darker and gloomier, God, we thank you for the rays of hope that shine from you, God. God, we pray for all of those in this church body that are going through hard times or sadness. God, we pray that you bring people into their lives that can draw extra close to them. We pray that you reveal your presence and your will for them, God, in those situations. God, we also pray for those in our congregations that are going through times of great joy, and we ask you to continue to be blessing them. God, we ask you to be with our community, our world, our country. We live in a world full of brokenness, full of hurt, and God, on this Sunday, we remember that there is evil that exists in this world. 21 years ago today, we saw an act of extreme hatred, and we remember those who lost their lives. But God, I also think about the amazing acts of unity that we saw following this tragic event. Let that be a reminder to us of how we are one body united in Christ. How we are called to love our brothers and sisters in both the good and bad times. That you want us to be your hands and feet on this earth, bringing this world closer to you, God. God, it's so easy for us to focus on the dark and the hurt, but you are the light of the world. We pray that we can help that light shine brightly for all to see every day of our lives. That we can all be true Christians. We can all be little Christ serving in our world. Because that is what you did for us, God. You paid the penalty that we were supposed to pay so that we could be a part of your plan, so that we could enter into this perfect relationship with you and that your blood can make us white as snow, God. God, we thank you for every gift you give us, whether it's those that are apparent to us every single day or those that we only realize in hindsight, including the gift of your spirit dwelling in us. God, it is so easy for us to get hung up on the things that happen in this world. But we thank you that at the end of the day, the final victory is already yours. Our prices have been paid. And that no matter what happens, you stand victorious every day of our lives and until you come again. God, be with us all this morning. We pray that we can grow closer to you and we leave this place on fire to serve you. And we just want to grow closer to you every day of our lives, God. Again, you give us so many gifts that we cannot begin to count them. And we thank you for all of those. In your son's name we pray. Amen. I get the privilege of inviting the choir back up. I don't know about you guys, but I always miss them during the summer. So choir, it is so good to have you back, and thank you for using your gifts and talents this morning.
Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. Hear the word of the Lord. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And thank you, Kim, for that good reading of God's holy word. And we know God's word is holy and true and can be trusted. Can you all already believe that it's almost fall? I had a friend of mine post a picture on Facebook last night of the first leaves that he saw turning. And it seems like just a week or two ago, we were like ringing in the new year. Does anybody else feel like this year has flown by? And as we get into the fall, we see that our students are already back in school and our teachers are back at work. And I say thank you to them because you do an amazing job working with our students. And for some of us, we're establishing those rhythms, right? Like, how many of you are going to go home this afternoon, and one of the things on your agenda is to watch Sunday afternoon football? we got a few of you there as well. And that becomes part of our lives, just like our students are going back to school, and that's a part of their rhythm. And I love the fall because it's such a great time to reset and do some amazing things. Like, I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to going apple picking at some point this year. But it's a great time to just think about what are we doing how are we living our lives? What are we prioritizing? And today we're actually starting a new series that's called, that we're calling the Habits Series. And these are a series of messages that are going to be about how can we develop habits and tendencies that help us grow closer to God. And the first one I want to talk about today is this idea of, first of all, us establishing these rhythms. It can be so easy in today's world to prioritize things like Sunday afternoon football over spending time praying for our world. Or sometimes it can be so easy to try to keep up with everything that's going on in our lives. And I want to give a special shout out to any grandparents out there because I see grandparents keeping up with their grandkids and I have enough trouble keeping up with myself. I don't know how you all do it. Hopefully one day I'll know. But... We can get so busy caught up in our lives that sometimes our relationship with God can be one of the first things to be set off to the side. And when we prioritize our time with God, when we make sure it's a purpose, when we establish these rhythms, it just becomes second nature to us. And I know for me, one of the best ways to help establish these rhythms and one of the best ways that I have found to grow is by having people to hold me accountable in my own daily growth and in my own journey. And it's true about all of us, right? There's a reason that God created Adam and Eve. We were not meant to walk this journey alone. We were meant to be in community with one another. We were meant to help build each other up and help each other grow and discover our gifts and our talents. We see examples throughout the Bible, people like Paul and Timothy, somebody who is a little bit further along in their spiritual journey, taking someone else under their wing and training them up in the ways of the Lord. We see the disciples, people who followed Jesus himself, have amazing conversations about how they could advance the message of God and other times have conversations of who is going to be the greatest and the least 
They weren't perfect. That's why I like them. We can learn from them and grow from them. But even when Jesus sent his disciples out, he did not send them out alone. He sent them out in pairs to help each other, to inspire each other, to hold each other accountable to this call in their lives. And it's one of these things, as I look at our church, as I look at our church family and our church body, we have so many ways to help, us, help each other grow in our faith every single day. There are so many ways that you can get plugged in and connected and serving God. And it's one of those things I love about the purpose of the church. We want to connect with people. We want to help them grow in their faith and find ways for them to serve God and use the gifts and talents that he has given you for his glory. And today's message is going to be a little bit different because we've got about an eight-minute video that we're about to show that highlights all the different programs and groups that you can get plugged into. And here's the thing. This is an eight-minute video, and I know I forgot some things. So during this video, I ask you to be looking for ways that you might get plugged in if you're not already. And if you're already in one of these groups, just take time to realize how much of an impact these groups can have on you. And how much, for some of us, these groups have become like members of our own family. Um, there's one Bible study that I know of, um, Barb Petsky leads it on Thursdays. And I have seen that group of women come alongside each other in times of need and heartache and support each other and love each other in the same way that I believe Christ loves us. They show them unconditional love through what they're going through. And that's just one example of some of what you're going to hear about on the screens today. So at this time, I invite you to sit back relax, and look for ways you might get plugged in and connected with others. Here at St. Joe First UMC, we look for a number of ways for our people to connect with, learn about, and serve God, and helping them grow in their faith because of it. In so doing, we have so many amazing ministry opportunities we just wanted to make you aware of in case you wanted to become a part of any of these awesome opportunities to grow closer to God and others. The first area we really want to dive into today is our educational ministries. These are ministries that are designed to help people dig deeper into the scriptures and grow and mature in their faith. We have so many amazing opportunities, including our women's ministry team that puts on exciting, engaging activities all throughout the year. If you have questions on any of these, reach out to Renee Foote and she can answer your questions. We also have several women's studies that meet throughout the week. On Monday evenings, Judy Thompson leads a study. Lori Krauss leads a noon study on Wednesdays, and Barb Petsky leads a Thursday morning study. These are all different opportunities for women to dive into the Word of God together and build wonderful and lasting relationships. We also have our men's ministries going on. Our big one right now is our men's breakfast and Bible study. This is a group that meets every Saturday morning at 9 o'clock for some food and fellowship and times of study together. If you have questions on that, reach out to Patrick McCreven. We also have several retreats that happen during the year, including a men's and women's retreat. These normally happen in the spring, but it's never too early to start thinking about those. An area that we've seen a lot of growth in over the last few years that gets me so excited are our children's ministries. We have Spark Kids Clubs that is going to be meeting every Thursday throughout the school year at 6 o'clock till 7.30. And this is a great time for kids to dive into the Word of God and learn some of the basic stories that we've grown up listening to and learning about as well as engaging in things like crafts, games, snacks, and just building wonderful relationships with each other. We also offer children's church during the 11 o'clock service uh, where kids are dismissed to go and get a version of the same message the adults are hearing in a way that's tailored to them. And every year we also have our amazing kids camp. I know this normally happens in the summer, but we are already starting to think about and plan for next year, and I'm going to be looking for volunteers sooner rather than later to help out in some key areas for that. Our youth program is also an opportunity for our middle school and high school students to dive into God's word and how it applies to their lives in 21st century times. This group meets Sunday nights from 7 till 8.30, and we really hope we're also planning several outreach and ministry style events for our kids to get involved in this next year, so keep your ears open for those. Also, to any of our kids that are 8th grade and older that want to become members of the church, we're looking at potentially having another confirmation class. If you are interested in participating in that and really diving into the basics of faith, please reach out to me. And if you have questions on any children or youth ministries, myself, Will Flaherty, is the person that you're going to want to go to for all of that information and more. 
We also have a young adult ministry that meets on Wednesday nights. This group is called YNR, or The Young and the Rest of Us. We've been diving into some great studies, some amazing books, studying the Bible. And it's just a great time for our young adults to get together and dive deeper into their faith. If you have any questions on any of our educational ministries, Patrick Creven is the chair of the Education Committee, or if you would like to help serve on that committee, please reach out to him. He'd love to talk to you. Our Evangelism Committee is responsible for reaching out to visitors, reaching out to those in our community that might not know about us, and really sharing the love of Jesus Christ with those outside of our church walls. Two of our biggest events of the year are headed up by the Evangelism Committee, and those are the upcoming Fall Festival, which is an amazing time where kids and families who are from our community can come and see just how much of an amazing church family that we all are. And if you'd like to help out with that, we'd love to find a way for you to get plugged in. And we have our annual Easter extravaganza. This is a great event that normally happens the Saturday before Easter, and it really starts kicking off that Easter season. We have a giant Easter egg hunt. We feed all of our friends that are coming to visit, uh, and it's just an amazing time, and I love seeing the smiles on everybody's faces. If you would like to help out with either of these events or get plugged into the Evangelism Committee, if you feel like where that is where God is asking you to be, please contact Scott Risk, and he can have that conversation with you. One area of our ministries that I'm always so astonished to see everything they're doing is our missions team. This church had a, has a heart for missions, and I love to see how passionate we are about helping other people. We have a group that serves once a month at the soup kitchen on Mondays. Uh, if you would like more information about that, you can find it at the Opportunities Desk. We also have our Sit and Stitch group, which knits prayer shawls for people who are in need of prayer. We also have our sewing ministry. This is a group that meets together normally about once a month, but they do so much work in their homes, making things like sweaters, and outfits, and this often gets taken when we go to the Midwest Mission Distribution Trip, and they make hundreds of outfits every year for kids that are in need. As I was saying, we have a group that goes to the Midwest Mission Distribution Center once a year. Uh, this is an amazing trip where we can find ways to give back and help people in need. Again, this happens once a year, and if you have questions on it, Barb Petsky would love to answer them for you to get you on the list for next year's trip. There are so many other amazing opportunities to help out in our missions field, whether it's through things like Operation Christmas Child or Coat Drive or so many of the other amazing ways that we can give back to our community. If you have questions on the missions committee or would like to get involved in that, John and Elaine Graves are the people you would want to talk to about that. We also have our blessing box. This is something we have on site where we can leave non-perishable food items for people in need and it's a simple take what you need, give what you can system. We have had so many people donate so much to this blessing box and so many people in our community have been impacted for the better because of this. Our worship committee is the group that works so hard to enhance our Sunday mornings and they do this through a myriad of ways. If you're interested in helping out with something like the altar committee, this is a group of people that they'll take a rotation out of the year and they'll just make sure that our altars are set up for Sunday mornings. Very easy commitment that you can do on your own timetable. We also have our choirs and our handbell choirs that meet throughout the year, and these are groups that help enhance our worship service through their beautiful gifts and talents for music. If you have questions about any of those ministries, contact Jim Krause, our music minister, or Judy Thompson and Keith Foote, who are our worship chairs. We're also always looking for people to help out behind the scenes with things like our sound and video department. Scott Risk normally heads up our technical stuff, and if you have questions or just want to know what that is like, please again reach out to him. He'd love to have that conversation with you and we're looking for as many people to help with that as possible. There are other ministries we have where we just show the care that we have for each other as a congregation, including our Love in a Card ministry who sends birthday cards, anniversary cards, uh, sympathy cards to people that are celebrating or in need and it's just a beautiful personal touch of the ways that we are continuing to think about each other as a congregation. We also have our meal ministry team, which helps out people who are in need, whether life is just getting too hectic with things going on or they're getting medical treatments or going through times of grief or sorrow. And this is just people that say, I want to help by doing something like preparing a meal for these people. If you have questions on Love in a Card or our meal ministry team, reach out to Savannah Tucker, our director of congregational care. She's also hoping to get a Stephen ministry training going very, very soon. So if you have questions on that, reach out to her as well. Thanks for listening to all the different and amazing ministry opportunities that you can get involved into. We hope that if you saw or heard something today that you'd like to get involved in, you take that step and have those conversations because we want to find so many ways for our church family 
to become an even stronger body affecting the world for Jesus Christ. It is apparent by that video that we have so much going on at this church that we can get plugged into and use our passions and our gifts and our talents. And like I said, I know I forgot some. I know that Bill Funk leads a Sunday school class every Sunday at 11 o'clock that has been going through some amazing studies, and I've heard so many wonderful things about that. I know that we have prayer groups that meet weekly to pray for our church, our community, and our world. And I know I'm forgetting about so many other ministries that we have going on at this church, but it's amazing to see how people can get together and use their talents and grow into the people of God that he wants us to become. I look at all of those groups and think they're finding ways to connect with people, to learn and strengthen their relationship with God, and in many ways to serve in new and exciting ways. And even with all of those things going on, I know there are areas in this church that we could also be doing more. I think about several years ago, when my good friend Chris Van Epps and Sherry Phillips saw a need to serve the young adults in our church congregation. Like, we've got stuff for the kids and the teens, we've got stuff for people who are a little bit on in life, but we didn't have anything specifically for young adults, and they designed a group called what we now know as YNR, or the Young and the Rest of Us, a group that's morphed over the years and has become an amazing place for young people to gather together and strengthen their relationship with God. Again, I think about these stories that I've heard from these Bible studies and these connection groups. Um, I, the stories and experiences I've been able to see as we grow and use our passions to glorify the God of the universe and to become the people that he wants us to be by establishing these rhythms in life, by saying things like, I'm going to have my Monday night Bible study be a priority or I'm going to make sure that I continue to join and sing in the choir because that's the way I can use my gifts and talents. These are ways that when we serve in these ways, it makes God so happy to see that the gifts and talents that he has given us are being put to use for his good. And like I said, I know for a fact that there are ways that we could be doing more. There are other groups that we could be starting to foster and grow. And if you have a passion for something that you know this church isn't doing, I know myself or Dan would love to have those conversations with you and find, about, find ways that we could help people in our church family and in our community. Because sometimes we can get so focused on those areas that we're passionate about that we lose sight of some other things. And you guys can see so much more than we as a church staff can see. But we want to be the most loving and caring church we possibly can be. We want people to know how they can grow together, how they can work side by side with their brothers and sisters in Christ to strengthen each other up, to help them through difficult times, to celebrate with them in the joys, and in many ways, by doing so, give back so many of the blessings that God has given back to us. I'm always impressed when I look at the ministries that this church does because we do so many. We know these last few years have not been normal, and at many times they've been some of the hardest times that we can remember. But I remember Dan having a conversation with the staff, and I think he shared this with everybody before, but he was giving the year-end report to, uh, to the district of all the things our church is doing when we were in the middle of a pandemic, and they looked at us and went, how? Because we have a passion for helping each other and growing and using our passions in order to help each other and serve God. So I pray that if you are not plugged into any of these amazing groups or ministries, whether it be a Bible study or serving on a committee, maybe throughout this week you think about where can I get plugged in? Where can I start using my gifts and talents more? If you're in one of these groups already, maybe think about who's that person that's sitting just a few pews away that I could invite in to this, or who's that person in my life outside the church that I can invite in because I know the impact these ministries have had on me. God is on a constant journey to improve us, and one day we might get it right, but I'm convinced that the likelihood of us 
becoming the men and women of God that he wants us to be works best when we have other people by our side helping us grow and learn and become the same people and become the people that God wants us to be trying to improve ourselves and strengthen ourselves every single day of our lives let's pray Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you for all of the people that have said yes to serving in all of these ministries and all of these committees and all of these Bible studies. We thank you for those that have chosen to lead them. God, I pray for their continued blessing, their continued strengthening. God, I pray that as we continue on to this year, we can establish these rhythms to make you a priority and we can get plugged into ways that help us use our gifts, our talents, and have you smile down upon us and bless our ministries. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Will, for that inspiring message. And I hope many of you do get plugged into the ministries and missions of this church. That you connect with your brothers and sisters in Christ. And, and grow in a deep, healthy relationship with your brothers and sisters in Christ. And, and walk the Christian journey together. And uh, I'm glad you chose to worship with us today on our fall kickoff Sunday. And we're going to continue to worship the Lord, but we're going to be taking Holy Communion together today. I invite you to turn in your hymnals to page 12, or you can follow along on the screens. Um, but it's one of my favorite things to do is take Holy Communion with my church family. And I hope you enjoy that as well. So hear this invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let's prepare our hearts and our minds to receive these holy elements. Let's take a moment and let us pray in silence. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now, as free and forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings to the Lord at this time.
Father God, for the many ways you've blessed our lives, we say thank you. It is out of gratitude and out of love that we offer you these gifts and ask you, Lord, to use them to help the poor, the needy, the hurting, and the struggling. Use them to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to people in this church and this community and all over the world. Use them for your glory, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. We're going to continue now with communion and the liturgy that can be found on page 13 of your hymnal, or you can follow along with the words on the screen. But may the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by the water and the Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this. In remembrance of me. And then when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one in Christ and one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast in, at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power in the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I know we've already done the liturgy and stuff, but I want to remind you that the body of Jesus Christ was broken for you and for me at Calvary. May we never take the sacrifice and the suffering that Jesus went through in order to save us. May we never take that for granted. But may we always be thankful. That's one reason why we take communion together. Is to remember what Jesus Christ did for us. To remember how much he loves us. And to remember the suffering and the sacrifice that he went through. In order to save us and make us his children. May we always be grateful. May we always be thankful. the juice 
may remind you that the blood of God, the creator of all things, allowed his blood to be poured out for his creations because he loved them. And he wanted to wash your sins away and my sins away. He wanted to usher in that new covenant between him and human beings. Where we're not saved through animal sacrifice, but we're saved through the sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ. May we always be thankful for Jesus coming to this world, living a sinless life, paying the penalty for our sins at the cross, rising victorious from the grave, and now inviting us to be saved, offering us that gift of salvation and adoption into his family. For that, may we always be grateful and thankful. At this time, I want to invite the ushers to come up and to help hand out the bread. And I ask you to hold on to the bread until all have received it, and then we'll take it together. Then you'll receive the juice. I ask you to hang on to the juice until all have received it. And I want you to know that we at the, in the United Methodist Church, we practice what is known as open communion. That is, if you, are, you don't have to be a member of the United Methodist Church or this, or, our, or this local church. If you are a follower of Christ and you want to take communion with us, you are welcome to the table. And even if you're not a Christian, but you're seeking Jesus out, and you want to know more about Jesus, and you want to be more in fellowship with him, you are invited to take the bread and the juice. And as you take that bread and juice, I pray that you'll take Jesus Christ into your heart and into your life and receive Jesus Christ and become a follower of his. At this time, let us take Holy Communion. Friends, you hold in your hand a wonderful symbol of love. May you remember how much Jesus loves you, and may we take and eat and be thankful.
I should have asked this earlier, but is there anybody here who needs gluten-free elements in order to take the Holy Communion bread? If so, raise your hand and I will bring that to you. All right, I see none. I invite you now to take and drink the juice. And remember, it's the blood of Jesus Christ that was sacrificed for you and for me at Calvary. Let us drink and be thankful. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we are thankful that you left perfect paradise. You came down to a sinful, broken world, and you came here to save it. You lived a sinless life so that you could go to the cross and pay the penalty for our sins. You suffered greatly. Yet you willingly laid down your life for us because you loved us. Today as we take Holy Communion, we remember what you did for us at the cross and we say thank you. And Lord, we want you to know that we love you too. Help us now to live a life of love and a life pleasing to you, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I now invite you to turn in your hymnals to page 529, and we're going to sing How Firm a Foundation, verses 1 through 5, or you can follow along with the words on the screen.
again, I hope you enjoyed worshiping with us today. I want to thank Wendy and Meredith for playing the flutes today. You guys sounded absolutely amazing. Thank you for sharing your gifts and talents. Also, a friendly reminder, please take these with you and throw them away. That helps us reset for second service. But I pray that you can find ways where you can get plugged into this church, where you can grow together and become the body of Christ, strengthened by each other every single days of your life. Go in his peace, power, grace, and forgiveness now and forevermore. Amen.